Digestion occurs in a number of places along the digestive tract. The mouth first mechanically digests the food into smaller pieces. Then, with the addition of salivary amylase, it begins the chemical digestion process of carbohydrates. The food then travels to the stomach where pepsin begins the breakdown process of proteins. Finally, in the duodenum, the fat gets broken down and carbohydrates and proteins are finished off. The breakdown of carbohydrates begins in the mouth with salivary amylase, then again in the duodenum with pancreatic amylase. These amylase enzymes break the long polysaccharide chains into smaller and smaller segments until it is a disaccharide. The brush border enzymes then cleave the last bond forming a monosaccharide that can now cross the simple columnar epithelial tissue and enter the capillaries in the villi. The nutrient-rich blood from the intestines enter the hepatic portal system to go to the liver before entering the general circulation. Proteins are broken down in the stomach by pepsin at a very low pH. When the chyme enters the duodenum and the pH is neutralized by car bicarbonate from the Brunner's glands, the pancreas secretes several types of protein digesting enzymes. The pancreatic trypsin, elastase, and chymotrypsin function well in a neutral to alkaline environment. Brush border enzymes along the edges of the villi do the final cleaving of dipeptides to individual amino acids, which are absorbed across the simple columnar epithelial tissue lining the villi to enter the capillaries inside, which then feed into the hepatic portal system for filtering by the liver. Beginning in the mouth, Lipids become exposed to lingual lipase, which starts the breakdown process. Lingual lipase works well in an acidic environment, so it continues to break down lipids while the food is churning in the stomach. The chief cells in the fundus of the stomach secrete gastric lipase, which also contributes to the digestion of fat. Once the food, now chyme, enters the duodenum and the bicarbonate from the Brunner's glands raises the pH to neutral levels, the lingual and gastric lipases become ineffective. In the duodenum, bile from the gallbladder is released to emulsify the fat so that the pancreatic lipase can finish the digestion of fat. Fat in the form of triglycerides have a glycerol portion that is similar to glucose with three long chains of carbons connected together. These carbon chains are called fatty acids. Various types of triglycerides have different length chains, some with double bonds in them, such as omega-3 or omega-6 fatty acids. When a triglyceride is fully digested, it becomes one glycerol molecule plus three fatty acid chains. The fatty acid chains are absorbed by crossing the simple columnar epithelial tissue into a modified lymphatic vessel called a lacteal, not the capillary like monosaccharides and amino acids go. The digestion process and secretion sequences are regulated by several hormones and neurological communication mechanisms. Gastrin from the stomach increases gastric motility, moving the food along the duodenum as well as gastric secretions to digest proteins. Secretin from the duodenum is released when acidic chyme enters the duodenum causing bicarbonate release from the Brunner's glands to neutralize the incoming acid. Secretin inhibits gastrin to slow down the delivery of food to the duodenum, allowing more time for digestion to occur, while also increasing pepsin production to further increase the protein digestion process. Choleocystokinin from the duodenum is stimulated by the presence of fat or lipids in the chyme. Choleocystokinin causes the release of bile and pancreatic enzymes while also slowing gastric motility like secretin does. There are many other regulatory hormones for the digestive system, each with unique and wide-ranging roles. Some digestive hormones have effects on the brain for regulation of food intake or along the GI tract controlling peristaltic activity, even cardiovascular effects. We will not discuss these in any more detail.